Hi, Tess. Thank you for joining me for Lead Time Chats. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, so the topic we're going to be talking about today is really how to be effective as an early career engineering manager. And uh, Tess, I know you found yourself in an engineering management position pretty early on in your career and quickly <laughs> moved into a VP Eng position. Uh, to start us off, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your path into management and some of the challenges you faced. Yeah, absolutely. So I um, became a manager when I was, I think I had just turned 24. So I was pretty young. Um, I did start working full time when I was 19. So I had, it wasn't like I was like straight out of school and directly into management. I had about four years, four or five years of, of um, uh, engineering experience before I switched into the management track. Um, but uh, yeah, I pretty much had this um, experience where um, I, when I joined the startup where I first became a manager, I joined as an engineer and I worked there as an engineer for about two years um, before being given the option to start managing a few folks on the team. Um, and I started out managing, I think just two people on my team. And pretty soon after I became um, a manager, I went on vacation for two weeks, uh, which was kind of funny timing. And it was extra funny timing because I came back and the CTO was like, here's two more people for you to manage. So I had like, I spent about like two weeks as a manager of two people. And then I, and then I became a manager of four people. Um, and sort of over time, I ended up managing basically like the whole back end engineering team for this um, small startup. And then as the team grew, I was taking on like more and more um, sort of like higher level management responsibility and, and sort of managing a lot of the like, um, you know, engineering leveling stuff and like professional development for people and feedback cycles and, and a lot of the stuff that's sort of at a very like overall engineering team level. Mm -hmm. And so as I sort of moved into that position, then um, I got promoted into uh, BPE, um, which I think was also kind of nice for the CTO because then he sort of had like a partner um, to work with for I think the first time in the, the cycle of that, the life cycle of that engineering team. Um, so that's sort of how I got into it. I mean, it was something I had always been interested in and I'd always thought a, a bit about like if that was, would be a, a track I may eventually take. Um, I don't think I expected to get into it when I was 24, um, but it was a really, I mean, I had a really good time doing it. And I think honestly, like I'd always done a lot of the sort of team oriented frankly, like emotional labor kinds of stuff for the, for the team, for the engineering team. And so it was one thing that was really, really nice about officially becoming a manager was that all of that work sort of became part of my job rather than being like stuff I was doing on the side, you know? Right, right. Yeah, it becomes something you get credit for and it's part of like, oh, building a better team, not like, oh, I'm an IC engineer and I do this stuff also. Exactly, exactly. Like um, I know people sometimes talk about like the glue work that yeah. some engineers end up doing. And I think like becoming a manager meant that some of the glue work that I've been doing then became like recognized and compensated and all of that. So that was a, a cool thing. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk today with you specifically about sort of like being a young engineering manager and, and what that's like is that I've just heard from like more and more people over the last year or so. And I, I think it may have something to do with like the pandemic and frankly, like I think a lot of managers are burning out mm. right now and switching back to the IC track and all this other stuff. But I've just heard from a lot of friends and like the younger siblings of some of my friends who are getting <laughs> into engineering management roles like earlier and earlier, like when they're like 21, 22, like very oh early God. career management track. Um, and, you know, and so people are like, I know you were pretty young when you became a manager. Uh, do you have advice or what was that like? Um, so that's sort of actually, I think it's like become a very topical, um, yeah. topical thing. And, and uh, like I said, people are definitely getting into that like much earlier than I did in their careers. <laughs> You're like, I thought 24 was young, 21. I, <laughs> well, I, I think you should be able to legally drink before you can. <laughs> <laughs> Where you can manage people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was talking to a friend, another friend who's worked as an engineering manager uh, yesterday. And he was like, yeah, I really don't think you should be managing anyone before you're 30. Uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> so. Well, what are 
I mean, it sounds like you're talking to a lot of people who are younger engineering managers and having mm-hmm. had that experience yourself, what would you say are some of the common challenges that that um, early career engineering managers face? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is that, like, I think if you've been working as an engineer for a while, you sort of have the vocabulary and like you understand like the lay of the land um, of like how engineering teams work and how they grow and how people grow. Um, And if you haven't been through any of that development yourself or even thought about like what these different career tracks really look like, like you're just sort of, you know, you're a year out of school and suddenly you're being asked to like leave your team um, at your like high growth startup. Like that's kind of a situation where you actually just don't have, I think the full context that someone who's like a just has had more time to like marinate in this stuff um, has. And so, you know, I think the things, one of the first things I tell people, and I'm, I'm sure this has like come up on this podcast before, but like, I really recommend that people re- read Camille's book, uh, The Manager's mm-hmm. Path, just because I think it gives such a great, it's like a great orientation into yeah. the space. And so I think, um, you know, a lot of people just don't have that, vocabulary that roadmap for like how you can grow in your career and grow your team and all of that um so that's like the first thing I recommend um I also definitely encourage people to ask their companies for resources around like either training or coaching um and so uh like I worked with Eugene when I first became (laughs) a manager and that was so helpful for me and I really recommend um, that people do that, especially when they're young, like you just kind of get to like borrow all this wisdom, right? Because what the challenge of, of being new to anything is that you don't have that wisdom, you don't sort of have that pattern matching, that like intuition built up yet. And if you can talk to someone regularly who has like been through a lot of stuff and, and seen all of that, it's almost like they can like lend you some wisdom to get through situations until you start to sort of, you know, build up your own library of experiences and, and, and things you can, can draw on. Um, and I know that there's also, I haven't done too many like management trainings explicitly, but I also know that, um, those can be very helpful. Um, and especially for people who sort of just get thrown into it, it it again, gives you that like vocabulary and, and, um, gives you tools basically, um, for, for doing your new job. So that's like the first set of things I recommend to people. And I think like, new managers should be really, um, should not be shy about asking their company for resources for these things because like, it's really, really in the companies. Once you're managing other people, like it's so important and so in the company's best interest that you are effective in that job and like doing well and supporting people. Like, um, yeah, like I think it's a great investment for any company to to invest in their young managers. Um, yeah, I think and young one of the managers things- shouldn't be shy. One yeah. of the things like the training and the um, something like the manager's path does is kind of orients people. Because I think one of the, the things that is a fear or uncertainty when people move into those uh, management roles, like you don't, not knowing what I don't know, right? And so like, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. if I'm doing this really well, but there's this like huge area that I'm just like total blind spot. I don't even know I should be doing and really just knowing like, okay, like team processes, people like here are the things and like, here's what are the things like I should be paying attention to? Are those running right. okay? And like, even if you're not actively working in all those areas, which would be impossible, but like knowing that those are things and just sort, sort of that foundation of like orienting yourself to um, what are the parts, what are the possible parts of the role? I found people just find that really helpful. Yeah, totally. Like it, it really serves as a map for Mm -hmm. what your role might look like. And I think also like, it kind of gives you more, um, again, more patterns to match. Like if you have only been working for a year, you probably haven't had that many managers yourself. And so (laughs) like the manager, you know, know, you're not going to have had that many um, people to like model your own work on. And so being exposed to more management styles and more ways of thinking is, is really useful. I mean, I think even that was one aspect of how I ended up um, getting coached by you too, was because mm-hmm. like my CTO at the, the company where I became a manager, what had been my manager for a long time. I loved working with him. He was a great manager. 
Um, and also I was very aware that like his management style wasn't going to work for me because we were just very different people, had very different levels of seniority, like people responded to us in different ways, not in ways that were like better or worse, but like, I remember very vividly, like right after I became a manager, I needed to like motivate people to stay late to like work on fixing a, a like there was a, a bug that we just shipped and it was causing an outage for a customer or something. And I was trying to like rally people and, um, and, and also maybe get people to, to fix something in the future. And I remember my manager, the CTO saying like, you know, you just say to them like, come on folks, we can't let this happen. <laughs> and like, he's like a six, four guy who wears cowboy boots and is like super affable and like kind of has this like, like that worked for him and people really res responded to that. And if I had said that, like people might've like chuckled along with me, but like, I don't think it would have been very effective. Um, mm -hmm. And what I figured out, you know, later and I think partly through working with you is that what worked for me in that situation was not just saying, come on folks, uh, <laughs> but really kind of like taking kind of like a more caring, like nurturing, almost like, like a sisterly attitude to the people on my team and being like, I'm looking out for you. Like, I don't want you to have to stay late, you know, in two weeks. So like, if, if we can like put some more processes in place to catch these things or like agree to like a different testing, I don't remember the details anymore, but like, you know, I, I was sort of able to encourage people to take on a little bit more rigor, but through this like framing of like, I'm here to support you and, and I'm here to help you. Um, and that was very authentic. Like I felt that very authentically. And it also just like worked for me as like a young woman in a way mm -hmm. that like my, my own manager's style, if I had just copped that, that wouldn't have worked for me very yeah. well. So I think figuring out things like that is, is really helpful and important as well. That, um, makes me think of something that I think is pretty a, a common challenge or a common hurdle for um, like earlier career engineering managers, which is finding yourself in a position where you're managing engineers more senior than you. Um, so mm -hmm. like engineers who have more technical experience. I think a lot of times people who find themselves in that position, either as a manager or a tech lead um, are a bit like, who am I to tell you what to do and manage you? And I definitely felt that as a tech lead the first time I was in that position. Um, how have you found ways to, um, to be effective in that role? Yeah, totally. Um, I think this is one of the interesting challenges and I think of being at an early career um, uh, EM. And also I think that like the first thing to recognize is that like you're gonna have a different relationship with every person on your team, right? And so sort of understanding like what kind of relationship you should have to make that working relationship and, and work, make the team most effective, it's gonna vary person by person. And so I think the first thing to, that I really recognized with like some of the very, very senior people who I was managing was, um, was uh, that, you know, I wasn't really wasn't gonna like teach them anything, but I could help provide a different context, like a different perspective and help provide context mm -hmm. on things. So sort of like help provide the, the 10,000 foot view so they could focus on like the things that mattered more to them. Um, I could unblock them from things. I could give them, sometimes give them feedback on like things like communication style or, or working style or, or just, mm -hmm. you know, provide insight maybe into things that like this person or these people weren't seeing um, on their own themselves. And, and that's not necessarily something you need like a lot of like technical seniority for, right? That's, that's really just about sort of being there to support them and support the team. Um, and so I think, you know, people, uh, I'll also say like, I hear the phrase like servant leadership thrown out a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have kind of mixed feelings about that phrase and like that concept. But I think that like that, like that is how you must be when you're working with someone who's like much, much more, more senior than you. Um, you know, in fact, one of the people who I first managed um, who uh, like one of those first four people, um, you know, he had been an, an engineer like like longer than I'd been alive, basically. Like his, his like career started like before I was born. And um, so I was really like, I'm really not gonna like teach you anything about programming, mm -hmm. but I can help you understand how like your decisions impact the product or how yeah. your work impacts the rest of the team. Um, and like, I think in particular that person really wanted to get better at mentoring junior engineers as well. And so I could 
And in fact, he at one point had kind of been mentoring me on some stuff before I became his manager. Mm -hmm. And so I, we could really kind of work on that stuff together. Um, there's one other aspect of that too, which was really helpful for me in that situation, which was that before I got promoted into being a manager, um, the CTO checked in with this, the really senior folks and was mm -hmm. like, how would you feel about Tess being your manager? And like, how would you feel about reporting to someone so young? And um, he really only put me in that position because he knew that like the people I was going to be managing were receptive to it. Um, yeah. So I think that was really, really helpful. Um, I'm really glad he did that. I felt like, you know, that was one of the things that helped set me up for success when I got started. Yeah. It sounds like one of the other ways you set yourself up for success is to talk directly with these people about it, right? Like being like, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm <laughs> like, you've been, <laughs> you've been working as an engineer for longer than I've been alive. And it's like, I'm obviously not going to teach you anything about programming or technical skills, but like, you know, how do we want to work together? You know, what does that look like? And, and having it be a conversation rather than like not talking about it and being like the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I think if we'd never acknowledged it, it would have been really, really awkward. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um. Um, so there's another thing I want to talk about, which is I, I feel like there's a lot of advice out there. Um, some engineering leaders caution others to stay technical for as long as possible. I think mm. we we both, both of us didn't quite do that and made a transition to management kind of on the earlier side. How do you think about or reconcile that advice? Yeah, um, I mean, I think honestly, this is one of the things that I like struggle with the most, like with where I am right now. Um, I, still think that like at some point I would like to spend more time as an IC. Um, it's also just very, I think it's very challenging because I, or it's, it's challenging to jump back into being an IC less because I'm rusty, although I think I am a little bit rusty. I'd have to like, you know, get back into the swing of things definitely. Um, but also because, you know, like with my current company and my current team, it's just, sort of like the the highest leverage use of my mm -hmm. time and skills and energy are in, in management. Um, and I really want like my team and my company to be successful. And so that's what I'm going to do and what I'm going to focus on. And I've, mm -hmm. I really have made peace with that in this role at this time. Um, I actually, when I started working on like my current project and with my current team, I had this basically delusion, to be honest, but I had this delusion that I was also going to write code. And um, it just became clear that like, I just wasn't going to be able to do both at the same time. I know that some people can do that, um, but I think it's really hard to kind of level up both your management skill and your technical skills at the same time. So I, I sort of feel like if you have a lot of experience doing one, maybe you can sort of start to ramp the other one up while still doing, doing the one or the other. Um, but it's, I think it's really, I think it's really hard um, one thing I'm actually grateful for with this, you know, I told this story of where I sort of ended up managing four people all of a sudden, and it was like kind of a surprise, but mm -hmm. in retrospect, that was a really good thing in some ways, because I, I think sometimes when people are handed like one report or two reports, they really are expected to continue to also mm -hmm. contribute as an IC. And I think that can be, can be a very difficult balance to walk because it's just like, you know, a lot of the people I know who are managers who also do some IC work, they basically are, are, are writing code like after hours when they're not in this, um, in management mode. Right. I mean, one of the things that's come up is like, uh, management work is fundamentally interrupt driven work. Like you are being, like your work is, is driven by <laughs> responding to things. Um, and when you are an IC, you really need to like build the time to focus. And, and it's just hard to do that if you're also responding to, um, responding to emails, responding to Slack messages, always sort of responding to and dealing with the things that are, that are coming in. Yeah. Um, so that's, one thing I I've, think, is the trick. One thing I've, um, I've noticed for myself as someone who also switched into management on the earlier side is like, in a lot of ways, it's always clear to me that probably not doing IC work is the most impactful use of my time. Whereas mm -hmm. I think for someone like my manager, who I think of as like a really, really strong engineer, you know, what people might consider like a 10X engineer, like it is a little bit harder, right? Like 
do mm-hmm. you manage or do you like jump in and do something for a day or two that might take take other people weeks, right? Like I don't have that mm-hmm. problem. <laughs> I don't have that problem. Um, but the problem, yeah. Then the, the, the challenge is like, you want to, if you want to be leveling up on the technical side too, then you're kind of still building rather than like being able to swoop in and like help out and, and do like a quick sprint on something. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, a good framing. Um, I feel like it kind of goes, I feel like you're underselling yourself a little bit, first of all, but I also feel like it goes a little bit both ways too, where like, if you, are working in an IC position, but have like management skills. There's also that you have to balance, like, are you gonna swoop in to debug a people problem? Like, I think that's also Mm. a thing that can happen. So I think it kind of cuts both ways. And also, again, I think you're underselling yourself a little bit. Thank you. (laughs) One one funny thing, I'll I'll share one other funny thing that like uh, someone I was talking to who is a, a new manager who's very young, um, who I was giving some advice on said to me, cause I, we were talking about this like interrupt driven work and programming mm-hmm. after hours. And he said, um, he said something like, well, the, the thing is that as a really young person, my comp- competitive advantage is that I have time. So mm-hmm. it's actually not a problem for me to spend a bunch of time writing code after hours. I, mm-hmm. you know, I, or it's actually like, this actually is like, I don't have the wisdom that like my more senior colleagues might have but I can just put in that put I can put in the time to effectively do two jobs at the same time and like continue (laughs) to level both of these things up I don't think that's the advice I would give to anyone um but I think that is also I mean I think it's an interesting thing to to note as well yeah there are these trade-offs and yeah as someone with with uh with a five-year-old and an eight-year-old I definitely don't have time to do to do two jobs (laughs) at once (laughs) kind of have to get really good at, at time management Right, right. Um, cool. So to end, do you have any like really tactical advice for mm. perhaps newer engineering managers who are also pretty early on in their careers? You, you suggested some resources like the manager's path and management training. Is there anything else you would recommend? Yeah, I think that's my most tactical advice. I mean, I think like the the main thing again just comes down to like you're gonna have a different relationship with every person on your team you will be more of a mentor to the more junior folks perhaps um you or or even to your peers um you may be more of a supporter or an unblocker for the more senior folks um and uh yeah just sort of going in and understanding that like a little bit of a different style is going to work differently depending on each person you're working with and and who they are and, and where they're at in their career I think that's the main thing yeah. to, to come away with. I think one thing you're really good at too is what you mentioned of like addressing it head on, right? Like whether it's mm. people who are more senior or peers, right? Like people that maybe you were in the same role as and now you're managing them and just bringing mm-hmm. that up and, and acknowledging that maybe like it may feel a little bit awkward, but then like inviting them in to, to, to design together how you want to work together. Totally, totally. Cool. Thank you so much, Tess. I think this will be really useful to folks. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.